This is Lian So, and in this video we're going to pull everything we know about pH calculations together so that you can sketch your own weak acid versus strong base titration curve. Let's suppose we're titrating ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide. At the start of the titration, I'm going to fill my flask with a weak acid of ethanoic acid. At the very beginning, no sodium hydroxide has been added, so to calculate the pH at the first point of the titration curve, it's just trying to find the pH of a weak acid. As always, we start with an equation with water, and we go for our Ka expression. The value for Ka has been given in the question, so I can substitute that straight in. My initial concentration doesn't change much, and my second assumption was that the concentration of hydronium ions should equal ethanoate, so we just square the top. Rearrange that, and this helps us calculate the value for the concentration of hydronium ions. Once I know the concentration of hydronium ions, I can use my pH formula, and there we have it. The pH at the start of the titration is 2.85. When I sketch my titration curve, I want my vertical axis to show pH, while my horizontal axis in this case I'm going to label as the volume of sodium hydroxide I've added. Now since I have added no sodium hydroxide, at 0 mils this means my starting pH will be 2.85. The next point I'm going to calculate is the pH at the very end of the titration. By that I'm referring to the pH that we get if we keep adding excess sodium hydroxide well past equivalence point. Once I'm well past equivalence point, the pH in the flask just gets dominated by addition of excess sodium hydroxide. And since sodium hydroxide is a strong base, we're just going to run a pH calculation for a strong base. We would have done these back in year 12. I start with an equation and that shows me that for each sodium hydroxide I get one hydroxide ion. Since my initial concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0.1 moles per litre, this means I expect my concentration of hydroxide ions to be 0.1 moles per litre as well. But for the pH calculation I need to know the concentration of hydronium ions, so I need to use that rearranged formula to work out the concentration of hydronium ions. We move the 0.1 in, type that on a calculator, and this tells me that the sodium hydroxide has a concentration of 1 times 10 to negative 13 moles per litre of hydronium ions. As always, once I know the concentration of hydronium ions, I can go ahead and use the pH formula, so I'm going to do just that. This tells me that at the very end of the titration, my maximum possible pH is going to be 13, and I'm going to show that with a dotted line. The next point I'm going to calculate is the pH at equivalence point. At equivalence point, I would have added just enough sodium hydroxide to react with all my initial weak acid. To do my pH at equivalence point, I start off with an equation and an ice table. What the ice table lets me do at the start is calculate the molar amount of initial weak acid I had. I'm going to use n equals c times v for that. Remember when using this formula, all volumes need to be in litres. Once I know my initial moles of ethanoic acid, I just fill that in. And since at equivalence point, I'm using just enough sodium hydroxide in my equations in a 1 to 1 ratio, this means I should have the same amount of sodium hydroxide added as well. The equation also shows me that for each sodium hydroxide, it reacts with one ethanoic acid to form the exact molar amount of sodium ethanoate on the other side. So we're going to show that. If we update this table, it shows me that once all the reactions are completed at equivalence point, all I'm left with is sodium methanoate. This means that the pH at equivalence point is dominated by only the presence of sodium methanoate. To calculate the pH, this would mean that I would have to find the pH of sodium methanoate. And since sodium methanoate is a weak base, that just means I need to find the pH of a weak base. But to find the pH of a weak base, I first need to know the concentration of this weak base. We're going to work that out. We can use concentration equals N over V, and since I know how many moles of sodium methanoate I've got, I'm just going to fill that in. What I don't know is the volume. But I do know I started with 0.02 litres of my initial ethanoic acid. I also know that I added some volume of sodium hydroxide, so I need to work out what volume of sodium hydroxide that was. I'm going to rearrange C equals N over V. And I know how many moles of sodium hydroxide I needed, and I know the concentration of sodium hydroxide from the question, so once I solve that, this tells me the volume of sodium hydroxide that I needed. So in total, when I add those together, I needed 0.0426 litres, and when I update my ice table, 
This tells me that the concentration of the thanoate ions that have formed is 0.0531 moles per litre. Now I know my concentration of weak base, we can go ahead and run our pH calculation for a weak base. We start with an equation for a weak base in water and we write a KB expression. We run with our typical assumptions, like the initial concentration doesn't change much, the top becomes a square. Now in my initial question I've been given a value for Ka, so I need to change Ka into Kb since I've got a Kb expression. Once I have a value for Kb I can move that back in, and then I can rearrange it and calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions. Remember though, to find the pH we need to know the concentration of hydronium ions, so we're going to convert hydroxide into hydronium. Now that I know my concentration of hydronium ions, I can go ahead and use the pH formula. This tells me that at equivalence point, my pH is 8.74. When it comes to updating my titration curve, I need to include the fact that I use 0.0226 litres of sodium hydroxide. This translates to 22.6 mils. So at 22.6 mils, I should have a point that says my pH at equivalence is 8.74. The last point I'm going to calculate is the buffer point. The buffer point is the easiest one to calculate, it's just pH equals pKa. What I do know though is that my question has told me a value for Ka, so I need to change that into pKa. There's a different formula for that. pKa equals the negative log of Ka. So we just need to move in the value for Ka and type that in on our calculator. This tells me that my pH at the buffer point is 4.76. The reason I've left this point last is because I needed to know the volume to get to equivalence point. The buffer point occurs at halfway towards equivalence point. So at 11.3 mils, my pH is 4.76. I now have enough points to sketch a little titration curve. So I'm going to do just that. There's a few things we want to mention though. The first is that at the start of the titration curve, we need to show that it's slightly curved. The second is that in the buffer region, it's not completely flat, it's still sloping, just not as much. For a weak acid versus strong base titration, the vertical region isn't hugely vertical, it's just a little slight vertical in there. And then it levels off, it levels off towards 13 but never really touches 13. As for the buffer region, if we want to show the buffer region on a titration curve, we need to circle the area that's about one pH unit above or below the buffer point. 